Everybody, meet Loaf. How are you, man? Great to see you. Thank you. Okay, ho! <laughs> All right, George, George, yeah. George. Yeah. I, I, I'm listening to that dabbled. Yeah. Dabbled. Yeah. Okay, 51 films. Is right. it dabble? Yeah. Okay, fine. I'm just, I, I'm just, I'm just checking. Well, I just want to know. In Canada, I just needed to know the definition yeah, no, of dabble. Just, it just, had you not sold as many records as you had sold, I would have said, he's a musician, but he's also an actor. Now I say he's a musician, but well, he dabbled. And he dabbles he in dabbled. acting. <laughs> How are you, man? Nice to see you. <laughs> do, you want, do you want me to go back and change it to say he, he's, a, he's an actor who actually also dabbled in songwriting and I made know, a record? I want no? You to, no, no, no. This is what I want you to do. I want you to, uh, can, uh, Rob Cavallo, who produced the new record, Hank yeah. Cool Teddy Bear, yeah. he coined this phrase and he said, Meatloaf is an actor who acts like he can sing. So okay. Meatloaf is an actor who acts like he can sing. That's exactly right, George. How'd you figure that well, out? Well, my, uh, my good friend Rob Cavallo, who worked with Green Day and you, said that That's once right. about you. Wow. But you don't you act like you can research, sing. George. You can Way to actually go, sing, though. What's that? You don't act like you can sing. You can actually sing. No, you... No, you uh, there, there's questions about that. Uh, I, when we first... Especially if I hadn't rehearsed like this album, because I had rehearsed everything, and then Rob threw everything out. And so we were working on songs that that the lyrics were being handed to me as we were like trying to do the vocal. And so basically my rule of thumb on things like that is please remove all the razor blades from the studio because uh, people uh, could commit suicide within the first two hours <laughs> of me trying to sing a song. It's that powerful, isn't it? It's the, yeah. In fact, it was so powerful that on the first song, Rob Cavallo called up the manager and, and said, uh, I don't know. I'm not so sure about this. I really don't know. And they said, uh, we hear, because these are new managers, so they didn't really know me. And they said, well, we hear that he has this very strange way of working. And, and Rob goes, yeah, it's strange, OK. <laughs> and it's like, because I, I'm like, it's kind of like, um, I'm just a. Uh, and the song is in the chorus, and I'm still in the third word of the first verse. <laughs> So it's like, uh, I play the, no, uh, no, 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 uh, I'm just, uh, no, no, that's not right. No, now I no. understand why he says you act like you can sing. Yeah. It makes sense. But the, so you said new management. You fired your whole management team, didn't you? Oh, man, I fired everybody that I could see. <laughs> what happened? Because that's a big thing, right? Trust is a big thing. Well, it, yeah, yeah, trust is a real big thing. And what happened was we started on uh, Bad and Health 3, which I really can't, I, I honestly, I'm like so upset with the thing that I, I have no idea if it's good, bad, or indifferent, but it was just so negative and so wrong in every way. And there, there probably was, I mean, it, and people look at it as a success because in this market, it sold like four million copies and, and uh, the single in Europe was like number one and all this stuff, but it was a failure to me. And, and that's what I've always said is that success is not measured by how many records you sell or how big a box office it is. It's, it, success is measured uh, by how you feel about it. If you build a bookcase and the bookcase is crooked, you're going to feel miserable. Right. If you build a bookcase and it's perfect and your friends come into the house and go, wow, George, you built that? That's fantastic. You're going to feel great because, and, and it's just, that's success. And, and so I was, they just put me on a bridge too far and I was blackmailed and I was stabbed in the back and, and, uh, and it, it, it came down to the, I was so depressed. I was going to, I, this is a true story. I, I was calling these guys in Minneapolis of opening a franchise called Jimmy John's in, in Kansas. I mean, I was really had it. And then finally I, I came back to my senses and said, I don't think I'm really ready to run a Jimmy John's. And, um, <laughs> And, and, and <laughs> so uh, I, re I got angry again. And, 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 and at that point, every lawyers, managers, I kept my wife, yeah. uh, lawyers. 
<laughs> lawyers, managers across the board, agents, everybody was gone, and I started over. Your wife's Canadian, though, right? What? She connected to Canada, your wife? Oh, yeah. She's Canadian. Yeah. She made the right yeah. choice. Yeah, she's, she, she's Deborah Gillespie yeah. from Edmonton. Edmonton, also, <laughs> right? Nice. nice. The, um, that's a thing and that now her mother and dad are sitting there going, they mentioned, they mentioned Deborah. <laughs> that's right, Helen, I did. <laughs> <laughs> It's a big thing when you feel like you're blackmailed. Oh, I can't leave Reg out. Reg. Okay. <laughs> nice. Well done. <laughs> you figured this out, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. I, I'd never figure anything out. It just happens. <laughs> it's a tough moment when you look around and think that, I mean, the Jimmy Johnson, you know, sounds like it's a joke, but to get to that point, it's not, right? You actually have a moment where you look around and go, what happened? Where did this all go? Was that... Did the, that moment, what happened specifically that made you think, I can't work with these people? Well, first of all, they, they can, you know, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not 52 anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice that it took them like about two beats to get behind that one? Because you looked 52. Well, because, because, yeah, thank you. I don't, I, they've told me I don't look a day over 51. How dare you insult me like that? So anyway, no, but the beats where Craig says, normally you people go, people go, well, you know, I'm not 24 anymore. I'm not 20 anymore. But I said 52, and it, it, the, the, the mind went, huh? Do you want to tell them how old you really are? 62. You're 62 years old. Yeah. So. They're, um... They're just but, but listen, um, I, have the, I have the brain of a 16-year-old, okay? So just deal with that. So, so, you may, so you're not 52, uh, so you're implying that they, they worked you too much? Yeah, they, they, well, it was a bridge too far. Right. And I got a cyst on my vocal cord, and, this, and things like that happen when you're overworked and you're tired. And they didn't let me have any rest periods. And everything was, it was all blackmail. It's like I was trying to get songs off the record. And they, they were sending them to the record company. Record company was coming in, blackmailing me, going, well, you know, uh, me, you want us to promote this record, don't you? So we really like these songs. So I, I, I think you need to keep these songs. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, but I don't like, well, you know, we really like them, me. We yeah. really like those songs. Don't you like those songs? Yeah. Don't you really like them? You know, it's like, and you just want to look at them and go, Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, Hang Cool Teddy Bear, is that Valley of the Dolls, the Russ Meyer film? Yes. That's where you got that well, from? Well, I got it because when we were recording, I, I, they, somebody said to me, what are you going to call the album? I said, I don't know. So I went home one Saturday, and I came up with 60 or 70 titles for the album. How many had Bat and Hell in it and out of? Well, <laughs> on the list of the record company, if you ask the record company how many, yeah. all of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you have my list, none of them. Uh, because even when we were getting ready, I mean, we were a month from releasing that, and they're going, can we call this Better to Hell 4? And I went, sure, if you want to be dead by tomorrow, it's not a problem with me. Oh, we can, <laughs> not a problem. I said, you know, I, and I said, it, you won't, it wouldn't be fair to Jim Steinman, and it wouldn't be fair to Rob Cavallo. And Rob Cavallo said, no, I'm fine with it. And I said, <laughs> Rob, it's not fair to you, trust me. And so, no, it was just, it was wallpaper, and it was this very strange scene in this Russ Meyer movie, and I, and I don't, didn't watch really the movie, and all of a sudden it was this party, and they all looked like kind of, I don't know, you know, beatnik hippies from the 50s, 60s. They were a weird combination, and uh, this girl got mad, and it was just the closed caption, and she was running out of the room, and this guy grabbed her and spun her around, and the closed caption went, just hang cool, teddy bear, and I went, that's it. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> And so then from then on, people go, what do you call your record? And I say, Hank Cool Teddy Bear. And they went, no, what are you, really, what are you going to call it? <laughs> no, I'm going to call it Hank Cool Teddy Bear. No, really, mate, what are you going to call it? it? No. Isn't it interesting, though, at this stage of your career, with the amount of records you've sold and, and, and the stuff you've been able to pull off at different stages of your career, you still have to convince people to let you do things that way. That's, oh, that's a crazy yeah. place to be. Do you, not, do you not have to do that? <laughs> No, but I'm not in the record business, right? The record business is, no, but, but no. No, the TV business. Yeah, but we don't. The CBC lets us do our thing. You know, seriously? For now, I'm they just found out. <laughs> they, they, dude, they think of Vancouver I Canucks hockey games on. You. No problem, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Before...
before I run down fact or fiction, there's a whole because you know you've been doing this for so long. There's a uh, there's a bunch of stuff I want to see if it's actually true about you. Okay, I life. can't wait. But before that, I'm none just of curious. it is because I because I just make stuff up all the time. Oh, do you really? Yeah, awesome. But I'm curious because they keep asking you the same questions over and over again, and it gets really boring. So I just start making stuff. I just lie. Nice. <laughs> I like that. So I'll probably lie again to you today. <laughs> oh. So the implication. Oh, okay, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the truth. This, you, Love. Um, <laughs> the, the this record here, your new record, uh, Hankel Teddy Bear. It's, yeah. It usually when someone's on the, facing death, you know, or they're about to die, or they're laying there. They their life flashes before their eyes. They're past. Yeah. Yours is about um, this character. Well, this character is named Patrick, and his life flashes forward. And uh, it, 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 I say it's what keeps him alive because it, it, the first song, Did Peace you on spoil Earth. Spoil the ending? Did you just spoil the ending? No, no. Okay. No, 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 not at all. Because in the, on the end of the record, he dies. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but it, what's key, it's what keeps him alive till song thirteen. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, the first one. No, but see that I didn't spoil the ending because now you go. Was that really what happened? Well, I'm not telling. So anyway, uh, Peace on Earth tells you where we are. Um, living on the outside, second song, tells you about the character. And he's not a very nice guy. He's pretty savory, steals, he does all this thing. And then we move forward, and his life really does flash forward, and he's in hell. He's in L.A., which is kind of <laughs> hell. He's, he's in L.A. and following around some starlet and, and who is not really anything, and he's like a little puppy with a collar. And, and Los Angeles is the title of that. Keep going. You have a question, and I'm stuck. No. Okay. No, I'm enjoying it. All right, I'm going to find out if some things are true or not. True or false? Fact or fiction? Do you once give a lift to a hitchhiker who turned out to be Charles Manson? Okay. This is sort of true, because I can't verify this. But when he got arrested, and he was all on TV, I'm watching TV one day, and I go... I know that guy. Oh my God, why do I know that guy? Oh my God, I'm sick. And then all of a sudden, I went, that's the guy, I gotta be. I picked up a hitchhiker in like 67, 68 on Sunset Boulevard. Mm -hmm. And I said, where you, because he, back then everybody hitchhiked everywhere. And I said, where are you going? And he goes, oh, I'm going to the top of the hill. And I said, oh, I'm not going to the top, I'm taking you to the top of the hill, I'm just going down. Here he goes, you want to meet a beach boy? And I went, yeah, cool. And so I drove him up to this house, and, and as the story progressed later on, Charles Manson was living with a beach boy, and the beach boy wasn't there, one of the Wilson brothers. He wasn't there, and this guy started to get really weird and tell me I was a rabbit in another life and stuff like that. <laughs> and I said, I said, this dude's weird, I'm out of here. <laughs> and so I left, and, and yeah, really, man. You made the I'm right a rabbit. Call. I'm a rabbit. And I, you know, I wanted to say to him, did I? Never mind. <laughs> so, <clears throat> really? Was I good? <laughs> and um, so when I saw him, I went, it's got to, and I've thought about it for years, and I'm going, that's got to be the guy I picked up, was Charles Manson. Wow. How scary is that? Very. How about That's this fact or fiction? You were at the same hospital in Dallas where the shot President Kennedy was taken. Well, we were there before he was there. <laughs> so you were there at the same time, though. So you well, were no, I wasn't there at the same time. I was there before. What do you mean before? I got there before he did. But how, like, were you gone before he got there? No. So you were there at the same time he was there? Oh, yeah, but I showed up first. <laughs> but I didn't... But I, what is this, a contest? See <laughs> so who got there first? No. You know, I got there before he did, okay? <laughs> Let me, all right, listen. You were at the hospital for whatever reason, and while no, you were it there. it wasn't for a reason. We were, because you got to understand, when we were teenagers, yeah. on, after we'd take our dates home, what we used to do was, the Parkland Hospital was where they used to take all the, all the, but anyway, we used to go watch for shooting victims as they came into Parkland Hospital after we took our dates home. Well, you sure saw one then, didn't I did, you? I did. But uh, no, it was a weird thing. Um, we had been to the airport. My friends, my friend Jimmy McWhorter, his father worked at the airport and knew actually what little gate they were going to take Kennedy out of. So we went over to that gate, and lo and behold, there was two policemen and maybe four other people. And Jimmy McCorder and my friend Billy Slocum went up and shook his hand. Me, not a prayer. I'm not moving. Uh, I, could, I, sh I met Elvis and I did this. 
<laughs> and John Lennon, I, I, John Lennon, the best I could do with John Lennon was, uh, thanks for passing the sweet and low. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, President Kennedy, not a prayer. And so then we went over to, I'm going to name drop, Mickey Mantle's bowling alley to get something to eat, but it was shut down. And and we, we left, and we heard the president had been shot, and so we said, well, they're going to take him to Parkland. So we started driving to Parkland like a nut, and some guy was out in the middle of the road, and he slapped a badge on the car and said, scoot over. And I did, and we pulled into Parkland Hospital before that car got there, and he said to us, don't move. And I'm sitting next to my friend Billy like this, and I swear for a whole hour I sit next to him like that without moving. We were scared. I don't think we said a thing. And, and later on, he came back and said, we want to give you $100 for gas. We went, no. And so he gave us a five. We split it up in three pieces. But, <laughs> but, nobody, but nobody believed us. They, they, because we, we were late for football practice, even though it was canceled. Uh -huh. And nobody believed us until that night we were on uh, TV, standing next to a senator from Illinois. That's incredible. Yeah, it was weird. What a life. Uh, Pan Cool Teddy Bear. It's a brand new record from Mr. Lowe's. You should check it out. Thank you.